Okay, I guess there's a, a quorum here. We can try to get started. Um, so, uh, oh, a, uh, a small procedural note. Um, I did an upgrade recently on my Mac and busted the voice recorder that I've been using, and I haven't gotten around to figuring out how to fix it yet. So I, I am not recording this meeting. So, and or, or the last couple, it turns out, uh, uh, the um, <laughs> the only ones, the the only voice I was recording was my own, and it it, it makes for a pretty dull monologue that way. Um, Pantera records most of these anyways, I believe, and she throws them up on her YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, um, well, if, if anybody begs me for, for a recording, I'll know where to go for it then. Thanks. Um, at some point, I'll try to fix my voice recording and, and I'll start recording them again. But there's going to be a gap in the, in the official archive. Um, Oh, let's see. Uh, Server-side appearance rollout and coming changes. Uh, we have Nick's here, but uh, just a couple of comments before I turn the floor over to him. Um, overall, we think it's going really extraordinarily well, um, and uh, you all get significant credit for that. Um, thank you very much. Um, so... Uh, very roughly speaking, uh, it looks to us from our stats as though on the order of three quarters to four fifths of Second Life usage is on viewers right now that support second uh, server side appearance. And that's, uh, I mean, the, the numbers go up and down quite a lot from day to day, um, but uh, that's that's kind of the range they're bouncing around in, um, and that's really excellent. Um, so that's uh, that's really good. Um, as you know, it's on two RCs now, the Tigre and and Magnum. Um, I'm not sure what the status will be next week, but we don't currently believe that it will be that it will be going to the full grid. So. Um, well, everything is subject to change, but that's that's what we think right this minute. So, um, and uh, so, yeah, I I haven't heard what the what the RC plan for next week is um, yet. So that that uh, so anything is possible. Uh, that's Does Nix know what that plan is? Yeah, Nix, I, I don't I don't think you would have heard yet. I, that that meeting happens after this one. Oh, uh, great timing. I'm gonna grief you in two hours then. You, you, usually we get a we get an email. Is oh is hang on. Nix is giving me hints about where to look for it. Clicked on the wrong button. Uh, I think it's fair to say that um, the biggest question we get from users is so, so is it out there yet, and how come we're not seeing anything? Um, Having it uh, on a, a portion of the grid is causing some user confusion. Um, and at least the sense I'm getting is that most users would like to see it go ahead and just go on out. Um, personally, I think it's great you guys are taking it slow and careful and cautious and uh, and and doing it, to, it at a very measured pace. We're we're collecting a lot of good data about it, and we want to we want to keep doing that. So, do you have you guys um, 
made any more viewer side server side appearance um, changes in, in as a result of your slow rollout. Why don't I just let Nick's well, uh, I'll let Nick's field that one. Um, pretty much just minor tweaks uh, from what we've seen so far. Uh, the system is working pretty much as we expected uh, to the best of our knowledge. Um, and even the scaling of how much load is being generated is pretty much right on par with what we're expecting. Um, but we want to make sure that a few other things are um, returning the right things and we're getting the right statistics that we want uh, before we roll it out to the main grid. Uh, we're trying to be uh, extra cautious. Uh, in regards to the, because you guys already have some um, server-side appearance, quote-unquote, polish code um, in the works, any changes that you're making right now, will, the, will that also become available at the same time as that, or will there be yet another uh, release of viewer changes? Uh, so we're pretty much planning on one more major viewer release for the stuff we're working on now. Um, and hopefully we should be able to integrate uh, with that our cleanup of the code. Um, uh, we can do a decent amount of code cleanup once we know that uh, server-side baking is uh, on the entire grid and we don't need to support the old system anymore. Um, so we're hoping that that can all be done in one viewer release. Um, if the delay out to the full grid takes significantly longer than expected, it might be two releases. Um, but I'll do uh, pushes uh, from internal to external uh, periodically. Okay. And uh, have you guys gotten uh, your raises yet? You know, if not, I, I, I'm going to have a. Yeah. I'm going to have to write Rodvik. <laughs> <laughs> you rolled it out, and it didn't destroy the grid. <laughs> you deserve a raise. <laughs> wait, wait, wait till it actually goes to the full grid before you write that. <laughs> Did I just jinx it? <laughs> no. Don't taunt <pull> Mark. <laughs> But Murphy likes to be taunted. Uh, Kitty's got a good question there. Uh, which one is on 98? Uh, so for Sun 98, as best we can tell, um, it was caused by a broken asset um, not baking, and it's something that the uh, viewer would um, pretty much just ignore. Um, but it also could result in accidental nudity, so we didn't want the backend to um, just ignore uh, missing texture assets. Otherwise, you might draw your avatar without clothes. Um, so, unless we get uh, word that it is a failure at a different part of the system, it's probably as expected. If you're referring to uh, Sun 98. That being said, it um, it might be a good idea at some point in the future to add some UI elements to show the user uh, what they're wearing that's causing their appearance to break. Uh, wouldn't that require communicating that back from the makeup? Uh, yes, but in a uh, case such as this, uh, the viewer also is unable to fetch the texture, so that might be able to be detected viewer side. Mm. 
Hmm. Uh, yeah, maybe a, a validate outfit button or something like that that goes through and does sandy checks on all the assets and all the pieces they depend on, like the textures and stuff. True, although not all outfit creation goes through editing appearance anymore. You just click on a folder and say replace outfit, then you, you don't. Um, so Worley brought up uh, Sun 99. Uh, I just want to share with you guys uh, the main problem there. Uh, people were seeing that their appearance was stuck um, and nothing they did would fix it. Uh, the cause behind that um, is related to the email I sent out earlier this week, uh, which was that uh, some people ended up with multiple current outfit folders. Um, specifically a copy of their current outfit folder in the clothing directory uh, from the cases we've seen. Um, so that's definitely not ideal. Uh, we're pretty much uh, guessing right now that uh, people did this uh, long ago before we had the proper restrictions in place um, on what you can do with a current outfit folder, uh, and they were able to move it out of their directory um, and they're just now seeing the effects of it. Uh, so we're going through and we're cleaning up those cases as we see them. Um, but if anyone knows uh, that their viewer is capable of uh, allowing a relocation of the current outfit folder, uh, please do let us know. Are there any more viewers than, how many viewers are involved with that problem, having that problem? Or I should say causing that problem. Well, we, we don't actually know because we don't actually know when those folders were created or by what viewer they were created. The, we just know that at the time the bug occurred, there was more than one current outfit folder. So there actually isn't any way to go back and trace that to its to its ultimate root cause. I do know that uh, now uh, 1.23 and Phoenix 3.73, I tried multiple times with both. Uh, no matter what I did, I was not able to do anything with current outfit folder with either of those two viewers. And as far as those viewers are concerned, that folder is not. I think you cut. Uh, sorry, you uh, cut out there. You lost the very end of that, but but yeah, thank you for doing that testing. Um. But, so we, you we know, do, like I said do, before, there are 1,800 viewers out there, so could have been any of them. Yeah, I set out to try to reproduce the problem and, and was not able to. So, Nix, I guess you're saying that there were some additional constraints placed on the current outfit folder server side. Uh, that's enough to uh, keep it from having the problem now. Uh, so it's just a matter of, you know, it, it, you, you might... Is this a matter of, of running a, a SQL query to go through and, and change the current outfit folder if it's found outside the room? Uh, we're, we're looking into how difficult that would be. Um, we, it's, it's apparently non-trivial, but we're, we're, uh, we're looking to see if we can just do it by looking at the, at the inventory system. Nothing uh, in inventory is ever true. Right, um, but but the the number of instances of that that have been reported is actually quite low. So, excuse me, I gotta go away for just a second. So uh, we are, we are doing a few things. Um, there are going to be some more uh, backend restrictions to try and help prevent this in the future. Um, some of those might be in place now. Uh, we might be adding some more, um, but. 
as long as your viewers uh, implement the restrictions I outlined in my email, uh, you shouldn't run into any problems. Um, we're also looking to uh, change the search pattern uh, for the current outfit folder on the back end uh, so that hopefully at some point in the future, even if people get into this bad state, uh, as long as the viewer and the back end are using the same current outfit folder, then the rest will be ignored. Um, the problem is that they use a slightly different uh, search algorithm for how to find that folder. And if you assume that there's only one of them, that's not a problem. Are there any additional questions around that or around other aspects of um, the server side appearance rollout? Uh, the only thing I can think right off, you don't have an answer to yet, which was um, our, our support. It would be useful for our support to know what um, RCs will have it uh, next week, but we'll get that from you later. Uh, yeah, I was able to do that. It's going to stay on Magnum and Latira. Um, no, new, uh, no new channels. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so that's happening. Uh, we can come back to it if people think of new questions. Um, uh, Vivox upgrade. The There is a release candidate viewer out there with this code in it. And the sources are pointed to on the viewer source repositories page. So if you want to be looking ahead to integrating to what's going to be involved in integrating that. Do you means. have a list of um, what issues that resolves? Specifically any security issues? Uh, I don't. But... Police notes. I haven't looked. Oh, that's useful. Are, are there any major issues that you're seeing with the uh, NuvaVox? Uh, I haven't. I haven't heard of any. Uh, I I haven't run that particular one myself. I've had too many balls in the air to try that one. Yeah, my, my, the big thing for me is whether it's going to be more stable or not, because uh, um, voice issues have been rampant the past week and a half, roughly. Uh, at least as far as from what we've been seeing in the support chats. Well, yeah, but they took another jump. <laughs> At least the ones I've been seeing. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. Um, you might want to download that viewer and do a little experimenting on your own if you if you think you can do that in a useful way. And do you have a? Um uh, project set up on your Jira for specifically for uh, bug reports on Fivox? I don't think they did set up a separate category for that one. It's just reported against bug and note the version. Aside from the fact that it's allegedly better voice quality and and more stable there really aren't any user visible 
uh, functional changes, I don't think. I think reliability is really what <laughs> we're hoping well, for. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's unfortunately that's not something we can bid on right now. Um, so, uh, interest list. Uh, I expect that pretty soon now we will see uh, the interest list changes for the viewer coming out in a repo. You can see along with a, a test viewer that people can start using. Um, but I, in fact, I, if I had to guess, I would have said we'd have seen it by now, but um, what we haven't. So um, uh, I had put it on this list because I thought we would, but we'll see. Um, but that's, I keep hearing that that's imminent. So that's good. And uh, have we got Baker here today? Not seeing him. Not in the list. Um, Baker is making real progress on the group bands issue. Um, I talked to him about it last week, and it's he's finishing up the viewer changes. So, um, long, real soon now. Great. I'm. You have no idea how much I'm looking forward to that. Oh, I I think that's going to be a real popular one in a lot of fronts. Uh, and once you release that, then I'm going to have all of support down my neck saying, we want to release. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll want it yesterday. Sure support gets on the night lease quickly. Oh, no, a night lease not going to cut it. <laughs> we want an actual release. <laughs> Our current schedule is sort of up in the air, um, and in what we release is sort of dependent on, on what you guys, Linden Lab, uh, put out. So we're sort of waiting for this, the server-side appearance polish code and the interest list stuff. And if you guys get that out before we get done our Chewy merge, then we may release that and then do Chewy. Um, but we're making good progress on our Chewy merge with materials and everything else that you guys got um, in the pipeline that's released um, and uh, so depending on timing we may release that first and actually be caught up with you guys imagine that caught up well oh, so uh, the um, I mean you can you can pretty much see what's coming by looking at the at the viewer source repositories and the and the and, and the release candidates um, Chances are good that one of the three release candidates that are out there now will be the next main release, uh, and um, and and then you know the other two are likely to to come before any of that other stuff. But there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline. There's a there's a, a collection of open source contributions that's coming. Um, that uh, I've had a little trouble getting through the. QA pipeline, but it's it's they tell me it's it's finishing up. Um, there's going to be the the Coco viewer will be out in a release candidate shortly. Um, Chewy is going to be in a release candidate again, and um, it looks at this point as though materials will probably be a little while before we do another another release a release candidate for that there's still a few bugs that we want to fix and there are other projects behind those in the pipeline so um, there's there's a lot going on it's it's going to be some time before we we get to the point where we've got the number of simultaneous things happening down to a reasonable number um, lots of stuff was sitting around waiting for the opportunity to get out and it's all coming at once now, so um, we'll we'll have to see how that how that plays out in the end. 
Well, once we get uh, our once we get Chewy out, because Chewy was the big holdup for us. Once we can get that out, and we're actually just preparing to go into um, sort of alpha mode with it, uh, and then beta. As far as an ETA on on that, maybe two months. Complete guess. I don't know. Uh, but once we get that out, we'll be able to um, push out releases more frequently with what you guys release, and actually keep up with you more easily. Yeah, Chewy Plus, that had was a big the, one. the yeah, and it had the problem for us at least that it that the things that it hit were the things that we'd spent a lot of time and effort working on. So that took a lot of time and effort to merge. Yeah, Chewy really set us back, and and also I just want to highlight what Kitty said. Until the next hidden project gets dumped on us with a whole lot of stuff that throws us like really far behind again. Well, I. Uh... I, I'm, I'm not going to claim there aren't projects you can't see because there there certainly are, but I don't think any of them have even remotely the kind of impact that uh, Chewy had. I, I, there's there's nothing in the pipeline that's going to be anything like that big a problem for you. Uh, I mean, Chewy would have been manageable because if it was just UI, we could have just you know ignored the UI stuff. We didn't want it. Don't need it. It was all the refactoring stuff you had included in that. Having like you sort of had a bunch of projects all in one chunk of code. These, these things happen, especially with big projects. Materials went in real easy. It took me about four hours to merge that in, and that's including testing and compiling. All right. There's a. a Good sized round of bug fixes coming for that, but they should be similarly easy to, to merge. Yeah, we or even easier. haven't really changed that area of the code much, so that helps. Uh, Worley had put the question in uh, that do we have any stats for the percentage of sessions that have ALM enabled. Um, in the past, we have. Um, I sent off a query to find out if I could get updated ones um, in time for this meeting, and I haven't gotten a reply. So apologies there. But um, I, it would surprise me a lot if, if it's changed very dramatically. Um, but But I really don't know. We, we do have the ability to see that. Um, uh, it, it, uh, Kat is probably already typing this, but um, we would love if you guys could put together another, another set of hardware stats. Oh, see, uh, that's, that's what he was saying. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, uh, we're, we're in the process of, of transitioning from one stats system to another internally. Um, and uh, the old busted report is on the old stat system, so it's not going to get fixed there. Um, when the opportunity comes up to redevelop it on the new system, which is hugely better in a whole bunch of ways um, than the old one, uh, then then we may be able to do that. Um, so um, I don't. I don't. I can't. I can't offer any better predictions than I have in the past about when that will be. But um, it, uh, when it does come, it will be less likely to break and be easier for me to produce. Supposed to meet week before last with the people who are doing the stats system, um, and uh, but my trip to while well, I was in San Francisco, but my trip was cut short. And I had to come back, so uh, it ended up not happening, and I haven't rescheduled it.
All right. So I think that's that's everything from the agenda. Uh, the floor is open, and we can sort of do it free form here. What's up? Going once, going oh HTTP Monty. We heard there's more HTTP stuff. <clears throat> I'm having a little trouble with my voice, so I'll make it uh, try to keep it short. Um, yeah, I've been battling the um, mesh code downloaders and uploaders, which is the next target. Um, Goal, they goal is to make that the next um, project view release uh, for the HTTP work, which is mainly just getting keep alarms going for mesh and using a lot fewer connections to do the same work. Um, the uh, most that's looking good. Looks like I've, I'm able to knock it down to about a quarter of the connections. Uh, viewers currently using 32, but I fault um, knocking down to eight. Actually, have a few routers in place that are currently falling over. Um, that needs a couple of simulator releases, though, to support it. Uh, two, in fact. Uh, some of those are getting hung up behind, uh, well, the SSA work. Uh, it has to go out first before I can get my first simulator release out the door. But from the new side, I'm going to try, and this is no promise, but um, get the project here out sometime next month is the goal might slip a little bit having found a few problems and then after that one the next goal with no particular date will be uh, first viewer with um, pipelining okay Ed, um, Ran away. or was it Miro? One of you were talking about we still have people with inventories that completely fail to fetch. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the, 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 they're less common. I mean, m most of the cases we've been managing to deal with by getting them to, getting them to clear just their inventory cache and logging in someplace with their bandwidth turned down low, their draw distance down low, so they're not sucking much bandwidth. Um, but there's still a, a few that we're getting that uh, we can't consistently fetch their inventory at all. Um, and they get the same result on the SL viewer, on the official release. So the question would be then, could this be related to their routers, Monty? Uh, I'd like to see some error messages, something from the logs. Yeah, Monty, I've got a friend with the same kind of problem. Uh, he can't log in on your 3 or uh, Firestorm AV3-based viewer. He can log in on Singularity. Um, all those frame rate is pretty terrible. Uh, and he's he's had a couple of times when he's been able to log in and, and run well, and then the next time he goes log in, boom, it, it's broke again. Uh, the only thing that that I, we've been able to figure is uh, net connection. Uh, you want you want me to have him try your three bundle ups and log? Yeah, I mean, without logs, I have nothing to go on. Uh, where else can you okay, get? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll get. Thanks, Russ. And sorry, didn't mean to cut you off there, Tanya. So, um, Monty, would it be all right then for support if we could get some logs and some info from these users and throw them up on a Jira? If support could poke you about that and see if you could have a look at it? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you.
Yeah, we just Merlo's got that one case. Um, that's a pain, a right royal pain, if I remember correctly, Whirly. I think you looked at that one as well. We managed to get her inventory back, and then it starts disappearing on her again. Well, the main concern I have is is I want to know if this is Firestorm specific or server side, or you know, if it's Firestorm, then we know that we need to look at Firestorm and look at her code and see what could be causing it. But um, at the moment, we just don't know. Yeah. Uh, the, the the one that Meryl the the one in, that Meryl has on our Jira that's a pain is she had the same issue on B three. The only thing I'll ask is um, the time between doing the session and gathering the logs up and me getting notification that it's available needs to be as short as possible for various reasons. Uh, it needs to happen within, definitely within uh, 48 hours and should happen within 12 possible. So um, timeliness is very important for these uh, client server dives. Okay, so how would, how would you like us to do that? Have the user file a bug Jira and then email you the Jira? Yeah, that's fine. Just email me. Um, probably best not to do it at 4 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Uh, East Coast time. Ah, uh, uh, you're no. Other topics? Nothing coming to mind at the moment for me. Uh, the only questions I have you can't answer. Drake is typing. Or not. Experience permissions. Projects that is in the pipeline behind the visible ones, um, and I am not in a position to predict yet when it will become visible. Uh, this is one of those things where we have to have lots of back-end infrastructure in place before there's any point in putting a, a, the front end out where people can see it, because if we put the front end out before people can do anything with it, it'll just seem to be broken. So. Uh, that's all coming along. I mean, it's being very actively worked on, but um, yeah, <laughs> uh, this is the right place to ask that. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't have an answer yet.
Monty, turn damage on. We'll kill him. Ed, you're the only guy I know that runs a damage-enabled sim that isn't a combat zone. <laughs> but you don't get griefed very often, Tanya. You really don't. Well, that, Worley, that's called home field advantage. All right, I think things have degenerated sufficiently. <laughs> Oz, Nix, Monty, thank you very much. Have yourselves all a wonderful weekend. Well, in a couple of weeks, watch for updates and email as usual. In a couple of weeks? What's in a couple of weeks? PPVD meeting. Oh, right, right, right. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good weekend, everyone. Have a good weekend, Oz. And thanks for your info. It's the weekend. Monty. We have our air show this weekend. It's going to be fun. I'm working all weekend. Not fun. No, our air show didn't get canceled. We got the uh, Patriots as a backup. And uh, we actually might be able to get some F-18s to fly over as part of a training thing. So that would be kind of cool. All right, catch you all fo later, folks. Poof. Take care, Ed. See you, Kata. No, oh, if I can get out of here. <laughs> TP's gonna fail. I'll probably just log out and log in at home. That's yeah, sometimes quicker. I gotta go. See you guys later.